Hi, my name is Steve Neuendorfer, and I'm going to be talking about representing concurrency with graph regions in MLAR. In MLAR, fundamentally, we have operations, and each operation is like a node in the graph. Each edge into the operation has a name, which is associated with the edge so that we can refer to it. When we take multiple operations and combine them into a containing operation, it, the edges become edges in the graph. And we also have a sequence between the operations. So we have a sequence relation between the operations. So at a fundamental level, these two representations are equivalent, whether we think of it as a sequence of operations in IR form, or we think of it as a bunch of nodes in a graph, these are really equivalent. So when you think of a, a, a region in MLIR, you can think of uh, a DAG. And every DAG can be represented as a region. And this is, turns out to be great for representing sequential programs. We have a relationship between each operation. So in this case, uh, we can sh represent the data dependence between the load and the add as A2, and the dependence between the add and the store as A3. We can also represent the sequencing between operations. So in this case, the store has to happen between before the load, and the store also has to happen before the second store. And with some additional things in MLIR like basic blocks and the ability to represent arbitrary operations, there's quite a lot of programs that we can represent. But what if we want to break the rules? So in this case, on the right side, I've shown actually a graph that's not a DAG. It's a graph with a cycle. And we can think about representing this as a sequence of operations uh, on the left, but clearly this is not an SSA form. This is because A1 is used in the first operation before it's defined. So the question is, what can we do with this? Can we represent an arbitrary graph with cycles in MLIR? And it turns out that yes, you can. Uh, graphs are directly supported in MLIR through a concept called a graph region. So the second question is, well, is this useful? What can it mean? And I hope by the end of this talk, I'll convince you that yes, graphs are actually very useful and they're great for representing concurrent programs. So let's talk a little bit about regions. So in MLIR, every operation can contain a region of code. In this case, uh, the add f operation is actually a very simple operation that's uh, by itself. It doesn't have a doesn't have a region associated with it. The SCF if operation does have two regions. It has one that contains one add and another that contains the other add. And the function definition is also an operation in MLIR, and it has a region that contains all of the code inside the function. In MLIR, there's actually two different kinds of regions, an SSA CF G region, like what you're probably familiar with, and a graph region, which allows us to represent graphs. The, an operation specifies the type of its regions using the region kind interface, or using the has only graph region trait. So on the right here, you, you can see a graph region, a, an operation that contains a graph region. And here, percent zero is defined before it's used, or used before it's defined. Um, and so this would not be legal in an SSA CFG region, but it is legal in a graph region. So what can we do with this? Well, one common use is to represent circuits with combinational cycles. Uh, so for instance, this is a, a circuit that contains a sequence of arbiters, and each arbit the, the behavior of each arbiter is given by the sequence of operations below. So in this case, the important thing to represent or to re recognize is that the token that is passed through the pass connection between each arbiter actually has a combinational cycle. There's no way to order these arbiters uh, in any sort of meaningful way. That they have to actually execute concurrently. And so this is a, a very useful uh, place where we can use a graph region to represent this graph. In the circuit LVM incubator project, there's actually a few dialects that are used together to represent circuits like this. Uh, one is the hardware dialect, which gives us a basic hierarchy for, for representing circuit descriptions and defines the HW module operation that contains a graph region like this. There's also two other dialects for representing combinational operations and sequential operations of different kinds. So in this case, uh, the comp reg operation from the seek dialect uh, represents a register in the circuit and the XOR operation from the COM dialect connect, combined with some uh, constant operations from the hardware dialect represent a NOT gate. So the circuit that we actually are representing is over here on the right, and the circuit just toggles forever, forever every time the clock uh, is triggered. We can also have more 
complex representations of hardware. So for instance, a representation that's often used in many large designs uh, is used for representing latency and sensitive circuits where each operation is called a process and processes communicate by sending messages through FIFOs. So in this case, in a hardware circuit, each FIFO can be represented as a memory with some control logic associated with it. And each connection between a process and a FIFO can be represented as a set of wires that communicate data and have a handshake, uh, a set of wires for a handshake. So together, processes can also be in a graph with feedback. And uh, this is a kind of representation that's also very important. Circuit also has a, a handshake dialect that's useful for representing these kinds of handshake circuits. There are a number of operators that can be used to represent deterministic circuits um, and a handshake.func operation, which is a graph region container. It contains a graph region and can allow us to combine our handshake operations. There are also some non-deterministic operators that if you use them, you can get behavior which is non-deterministic, which is sometimes useful in hardware circuits. The circuit handshake dialect is also de designed to compose with uh, other existing dialects like the Aerith dialect for representing fundamental math operations. These kinds of models can also be useful for higher level software models. So for instance, in TensorFlow, there's a very simple, similar kind of model. In this case, on the right, there's uh, a graph uh, that represents a, a loop in a sequential language. In this case, it's been converted to a graph and the graph has a cycle. The cycle is represented by the red signals uh, in the IR form on the left. In TensorFlow graphs, there are also uh, special control operations that represent control dependencies between different operations in the graph. These are represented in yellow. Uh, so for instance, this constant node needs to be triggered every time you go through the, 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 the loop in order to check the exit condition for the loop. So representing this would, is, uh, used to be done in a very different form in TensorFlow that was much more awkward because it didn't have a graph. So what happens if we don't have graph regions? How, how would we represent these kinds of things in MLIR? Uh, so uh, most of the time it ends up coming down to a representation like this, where instead of being able to represent the connections between operations only using values in MLIR, we have to have additional operations that essentially declare values. And then these uh, the, the, value, the MLIR values associated with those operations are passed to all of the operations that we actually want to connect. So what that ends up with is that the graph that we end up representing looks nothing like the graph that we actually want. Uh, so it, you know, syntactically we can represent it, but it's actually very awkward. So because of this, it, signals are always operands. Uh, this makes it less convenient to traverse because we would prefer that the outputs of our signals are actually results of, the, of our fundamental operations like reg and not. Similarly, because we have explicit signal uh, operations, it's less concise to write. Sometimes we also need special connection, uh, special operations that connect two signals together, like uh, the connect operation that I've shown here, in order to directly connect an input to an output. Uh, th so this further makes it uh, adds additional operations that don't actually process any data. They're just there to represent our syntax, our our design syntactically. So in conclusion, graph regions are an important feature of MLIR, and it makes representing many kinds of designs easier. And several out-of-tree dialects are used to, to represent programs with concurrent behavior. We'd love to hear from anybody else who's interested in using graph regions and talk about what your use cases are. Thanks.